All right, so we are gonna build a mousetrap car today using the most rudimentary things found at home. We are not gonna get crazy with anything today as far as tooling goes. It is gonna be a super simple, effective mousetrap car. Uh, basically, I scoured around looking for things that I had, uh, basic pliers, Coping saw. And this isn't even a good coping saw. This is like a generic semi-bent coping saw that does the job, which is something you'll probably might have laying around in the garage. It's a little bit difficult to use. I also have a not so great glue gun, which is usually something you have. Um, you know, building things is much easier if you have really good quality tools. Um, but we're gonna try and build something here using uh, pretty much minimal things. I got two mouse traps because I'm probably gonna mess one up, so I'm gonna set this one off to the side. I got a piece of really thin plywood. This is eighth inch Baltic birch. And I got some CDs here. And then I got some other scrap ones that I just sort of cut with this, all right? Uh, and then I've got some straws. Uh, you know, plastic straws are hard to come by now that everybody's switching to paper, but found some of these laying in a drawer. And then I've got these two copper steel um, rods that are from like a uh, dry cleaner type clothes hanger. Um, so real basic, not much tools needed. Uh, let's get going. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna start mapping out. This is gonna become the body of my mousetrap car. Uh, so let's go over real basic first. How does a mousetrap car work? Um, you load up the mousetrap with a string attached to it. It goes to an axle. And then when you release this, zhoop, pulls a string. And then this pulls uh, the axle, unwinds it, and zoom, your car is off to start. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna make this mousetrap usable. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my pliers here. I'm gonna pull off all the non-essentials, you know? So mousetrap has a trigger here. We're gonna pull that off, you know? Don't wanna get triggered. All right, let's get that out of there. We're gonna pull this other part of the trigger off. Don't need that either. All right, there we go. All right, so now we basically have a spring that snaps. All right, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna take this apart to make it more usable. So there is this spring right here which is hooked onto the brass snapper. What we're gonna do is just flip that over there. Now the spring is down snug, but it is not, it's not like activating the lever here. So now we can work on this lever and not worry about getting snapped, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this little hook here. So very carefully, I wanna pry this hook open and then I can pop that hook off the end, just like that, all right? So now it's not attached to the mousetrap anymore. And then I'm gonna use my pliers uh, to, to open it up. I got this thick part, the flat part of the pliers here, I can kind of use, and if I squeeze it, I might be able to straighten that up. Let's do that again, right in there. Straighten that up. Okay. Now I've got a hook, okay? Now, I got a hook on here, and if I wanna use this, this can be what unwinds my string, all right? Um, what I'm gonna do now is, if I wanna tie some of this and I've got this tied to it and I'm going, the hook is facing the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do is actually, carefully here, is I'm gonna grab this hook with my pliers and I'm actually gonna twist it 180 degrees. Ugh, there we go. There we go, I got it now, I got it facing the correct direction, all right? I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna close it up so that it can uh, definitely hold my string. So now I've got this tight looped hook right on there. All right, um, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with this. Next thing, 
I'm gonna set this off to the side. Next thing what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this mousetrap car body that I've got here, and somehow this is gonna get mounted on here and a string's gonna have to pull it. But a string can't pull it if it's covered by the wood. The string can't get through the axle. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna need to cut I'm gonna need to cut this into like kind of a U shape right here, all right? Basic U shape, nothing too crazy, nothing too precise. It's okay if it's a little sloppy. So I'm gonna take my coping saw here. I'm gonna put it right here and uh, get this cut. So coping saw, real kind of simple. Keep it going on the opposite side here. All right. Wow. That is rough. Didn't even stay on the line, but it's all right. I do have some hairs back here, so if you have some sandpaper, go ahead and work that off. If you don't have sandpaper, you could use, like, the edge of your pliers, which is what I'm doing because I'm trying to make this like I got absolutely no tools in the house, all right? So I just kind of used that, kind of just worked it, got the splintery edges off, there we go. All right, now we're gonna plan out where our axles are gonna go. Super important things when doing these axles is that if you have, let's say these are my axles right here, if they are not perfectly parallel with each other, then my car is gonna turn. So if I have this, twisted here, you know, I'm obviously exaggerating, you wouldn't do this on purpose here, it's gonna go and it's gonna turn this way. And if I had it twisted the other way, it's gonna turn that way. And same with the back here, if I have this turn, it's gonna turn this way, you know? So it's real important to make sure that they're both parallel. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna use a ruler here. So I could take my ruler here and I am gonna just put my one, the base of the ruler all the way down here and I'm just gonna make some marks here. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go about a quarter inch in and about half an inch in. Then I'll come all the way down here and I'll keep the same marks and I'll go up to like, you know, I'll do a 14, 15. And I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go quarter inch, half inch, I'm gonna go 14 and 15, there we go. Cause you know, I, this wasn't like a specific size. You just want it long enough, all right? You want it long enough. If they're real short, you see these short, short mousetrap cars, what's happening then is if you build it super short, your CDs start clacking into each other, you know? A little bit longer, a little bit more stable. All right, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the glue gun and I'm gonna put this right there and you'll notice that this is gonna be covered at first. Then I'm gonna take the other part and I'm gonna put it up here. All right, so let's get this glue gun fired up and get some glue going. All right, what we're gonna do now is now we've got this glued, this glue is setting up, it's cooling. I dropped a bead of glue underneath this straw, put it down there on my marks to make sure that it's parallel with these. I dropped a bead of glue and then I built up, I built up a bead on this side and on that side to give this some reinforcement because the force is gonna come from this, you know, as we're transferring from our potential energy to our kinetic energy, it's gonna be putting some pull and some strain on this wheel here and where this connection is. So you kind of want to bulk that up a little bit and make it uh, make it clean. I know hot glue can get messy real quick, so we try to do our best and keep it neat in there. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do now is how am I gonna attach these wheels to my axles? Um, I've got these extra scraps right here and I'm thinking the best way is to get this into this piece of wood and then I'm gonna hot glue this onto the wood and try and do my best to center it. 
You don't want it off center like this, because if it is, then every time it goes around, it's gonna be wobbling like this, and that's gonna take away from your energy transfer. So you want your axles centered on your wheels as best as possible. Now, I'm gonna use a drill to do this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a little hole in this piece of wood right here that I can jab this into, you know? So I just jab that in there, and then I'm gonna, I gotta build this up a little bit. So I gotta build up a little bit of hot glue on that, a little bit of glue in there, and get this globbed up and real clean on there, you know? I, I wanna make sure that this thing's sticking. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting that glue on there. You know, it doesn't have to be super neat, but don't wanna make a mess of your work area. I'm gonna take this CD and I'm gonna put that on there and try to make it as centered as possible. You know, you, you gotta be kind of quick because it does, uh, does start solidifying up decently fast. You know, you don't wanna have it, uh, have it be all over the place. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more glue there on top. Let that solidify. So what I've got here, it's already starting to cool down a little bit. You know, I've got this axle on the wheel right here, you know. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this to another wheel. Now, if I go ahead and I put this on here right now, and the other wheel, like if I just go bop, bop, put that on there, it's gonna be, you know, locked in there. I won't be able to get it onto my car. So one of the tricky things is, is trying to get the balance and the patience to slide it through and to set it up at the same time. So you gotta hold real still while the glue is solidifying, you know? Be patient, be patient, you know? If you try to rush, you're gonna get sloppy, glue's gonna harden, it's gonna get sticky, you might get burned, you know? So take your time in there. And so I'm gonna time lapse all this here so you don't have to sit and watch. All right, so we are back here. We've got the glued up axles. The wheels are on here. We're running through these straws. I've got my mouse trap all set up here. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna grab my pencil and if I were to um, take my mouse trap and it will spring back to here, this is called a moment arm and my moment arm I want the end of it to ideally meet right here where the axle is. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right there and I am gonna try and center my moment arm in the center of my axle so that I'm pulling in the best line. So that will make my mousetrap off center as far as the body of the car is concerned. I'm gonna make a mark right here and right here. Now, I don't wanna glue this down because I don't know if this is gonna be the fastest or go the furthest or either. Cause I might have to change the length of this by either, you know, taking that out, sliding a new one in so that it goes further down or, you know, shortening it up and moving this further back. I don't know yet. So what I gotta do here is, is I'm not gonna glue this down. You know, so I'm just gonna use two thin pieces of duct tape and give it a wrap right here and a wrap right here to try and uh, just keep it down instead of having it down permanently. So we've got the mousetrap car here loaded up, wound up, and we're gonna go ahead and let it go and see how far it goes. Uh, oh. 
so we went about 35 feet right there to here. So this is the most simple form of a mousetrap car that I could make. And in our next video, we'll troubleshoot different issues that could happen when building a mousetrap car. Thanks for watching how to build this mousetrap car. And like I said, in our next video, I'm gonna take this mousetrap car and I'm gonna try and make it faster and go farther by troubleshooting some, some issues that commonly arise with mousetrap cars. So check out the other videos and I'll see you guys next time.